Hello, and welcome here, or welcome back. Well, my passport expired back in 2018, and I finally got myself a brand new passport, and wouldn't you know it, just in time for the 4th of July. Now, as a Canadian, I've never been down for the 4th of July before, so this is my very first time going down to it, and I want to have a real US and A experience while I'm there. Now, initially, this was just going to be a one-night affair. However, when I was telling my friends about this, they asked me if I'd be leaving after work on the day that I was working. And I thought, that actually sounds like a way better idea than what I was going to do. So I left an evening early and made it a two-nighter instead. Now, I didn't want to bother paying for a campsite on my first night, so I went to the Loch Alva Wilderness Area, which is just on the eastern side of St. John. And according to the New Brunswick website, the wilderness areas are supposed to be areas that have no houses or human contact or anything, so they're set aside for nature. So I thought, oh, I'll just ride up the road into this wilderness area, and I'll camp in the wilderness. So I pulled up, it's fairly late at night, and wouldn't you know it, there's houses in the wilderness area. Why are there houses in the wilderness area? The, why did the website lie to me? So I basically slept beside some guy's driveway on the side of the road because why was there a driveway there? This is a wilderness area. But in any case, I woke up at six o'clock in the morning with the sun and got myself an early start. And this is the morning of the 4th of July because I left on the 3rd. So I got myself into the States right around nine o'clock, somewhere in there. And I made my way down to my campsite so I could check in. This was a wonderful campsite off in the wilderness. But I mean, look at this wonderful place. This was well worth the $80 or whatever it was. Great little campsite, loved it. And as I made my way up towards Eastport, I kept on passing through these tiny little towns and they had all their historic vehicles out. But I didn't have time to stop because I had to keep on going because I had a pancake breakfast ahead of me and I was not going to miss out on my all-you-can-eat American pancake breakfast. And I'll admit, I was irresponsible. I came to a $10 US pancake breakfast with only $7 to my name because I forgot to take out cash. And these wonderful ladies at the front desk, they let me in. And thank you so much to those wonderful ladies because I had a great breakfast and this was an awesome venue to have it in. But Eastport, I have one major complaint with you. This is a 25 mile per hour zone and I do not like driving 25 miles per hour. And then once in Eastport, now 11 o'clock on the morning of the 4th of July, what should I find but the torment of children and an amazing U.S. Navy vessel. And to my absolute delight, there was no charge, it was free. You just had to line up and you get to go in this great big vessel. So that's absolutely what I did. You're not allowed to take any pictures of the inside of it. They were very, very clear. Do not take pictures of the inside of the boat. So I didn't. So that's why these are all exterior shots, but I assure you the inside was also cool. And this vessel is the USS Forrest Sherman, which is named after the youngest serving commander of the Navy, who was a World War II veteran. And this is a guided missile destroyer. So all that this thing has for guns is just a five inch deck gun up on the front. And then there's a few 50 caliber machine guns on the outside. But otherwise, this thing just shoots missiles. And if you Google search Eastport, you're gonna see three things. There's gonna be this buoy, there's going to be a mermaid lady, and there's going to be a dude holding a fish. And I got to see all three of them. There they are. Now, Eastport itself is a great little town. There's loads of cool little shops, and I really highly recommend checking it out. Now the parade got started a little bit behind schedule, but they sent down all of the emergency vehicles first. All of them with their emergency vehicle sirens absolutely blaring and giving it heck. And it was awesome. And after all the emergency vehicles, I had the crew of the USS Forrest Sherman come down. And as you can tell, I'm around the corner here from where the parade starts. And the crowd went absolutely berserk over having these people here. And it was so cool. 
and I'm not even American. I'm a Canadian guy just standing here. And I was excited for the crew of the USS Forrest Sherman. These people rule. I mean, come on. High fives, fist bumps. You gotta join the Navy, man. You know, nothing quite says exciting candidate quite like a convertible PT cruiser. Retirement home? Awesome. Here we have Little Mr. Fourth of July, and back by popular demand, Little Mr. Eastport, 1991. Still getting out there, still looking great. Eastport is also home to the Eastport Pirate Festival, which I would 100% go to if I wasn't already booked to go someplace else on that weekend. I'm actually kind of disappointed. I want to see the Pirate Festival, but I'm sure that Pirate Festival 2025 is going to be off the hook. And after the parade, I was deadly tired, so I went back to my campsite, I ate a fist-sized block of cheese, and then I came back to Eastport, and it was sunset, and check this out. This is just beautiful. So now here at the port we got this great big U.S. Navy ship that's moored onto the line here and you can see that there's a mooring line going from the back of the ship to the block and a few of these boats are showing us how to go around that mooring line. However, one of our friends down here was not that observant. Now I can't imagine the kind of a talking to you would get from the captain of a U.S. Navy ship and a harbor master for pulling a stunt like this. Taking a video of the boat going by. And this is a tourist town, of course. Fourth of July. The fireworks, absolute 10 out of 10. Goes without saying. Awesome show. After all that, I headed back to my campsite, and this was my first time riding in actual darkness on the motorcycle. And I got back to my campsite, had myself some nice hot noodles, and made my way to bed. July 5th, I woke up with the sun, 5 o'clock in the morning. Famous Fundy Fog. It is always foggy along the Fundy Coast, and it's no different right here because this is the Fundy Coast. So, not uh, not really wanting to hang around for too long, drive around in circles and just wait for things to open up, I decided to make my way fairly directly back up to Canada.
But of course, I'm a little bit of a sucker for monuments and historical sites, so I did pull over here. It's a historical site for the earliest permanent settlement of French explorers here in North America, or at least this part of North America. In any case, I couldn't see the island because it was totally fogged in, but this was a really nice historic site. They did a great job. I highly recommend it if you're in the area. This is Calais, Maine, which despite being Friday, July the 5th, was completely shut down. Nothing going on around here. So I just drove straight on through, back across the border into St. Stephen, Canada. And since this was still fairly early in the morning, and I really did have the entire day to get back home, I decided to make my way down to St. Andrews, which is essentially a 1910s to 1920s rich person town. So it's got a lot of really beautiful architecture and a lot of really cool stuff along the way. Then on the way down to St. Andrews was the Canadian side of St. Croix Island. And not really to my surprise, the U.S. side was way cooler than the Canadian side. However, I did get to actually see the island now. So, you know, 5 out of 10, check it out. And St. Andrews itself was a wonderful little town, and in St. Andrews, is this blockhouse, which still flies the British flag over top. And maybe maybe some Americans don't know this. This is from the War of 1812, the only war that Canada and the USA ever fought. And do you know who won? Do you know who won? Canada won. That's right. This blockhouse is part of Canada winning. Just a special reminder that the White House is white because the Canadians lit it on fire. And by this time, I'd spent a little bit too much time in St. Andrews and wanted to make my way out. However, on my way out, I saw this beautiful courthouse, so I had to stop and look at it. And then beside it, look at that, a jail built in 1832. And oh, what's this? Free tours. You know I'm doing a free tour. This is the Algonquin Resort, a luxury hotel, built in 1889. And then for lunch, I stopped at this wonderful beach near Minister's Island. Now, Minister's Island is a luxury little island that was owned by some fancy rich dudes back in the day. At low tide, you can drive across it on a road, and then at high tide, sorry, you can't. Go get a boat. But this was high tide, so I just sat here and enjoyed the view. And then from there, I headed home. Three days, overall, absolute 10 out of 10. We'll definitely be doing more camp with my motorcycle, because this was awesome. So thanks for checking this out. I hope you've enjoyed it, because I really enjoyed making this. 